Hello, Kim McIntyre here at Moai. I hope you can hear me. It sounds like I can hear myself, so I should be talking at a good voice. Uh, fall is in the air at my home in Nevada, northern Nevada, anyway. And it gets people excited for ski and snowboard season. And that's what this get up's all about right and this get up is in relation to head injuries concussions whiplashes how they affect the brain what you can do to help yourself heal from these um, these traumas that can be self-inflicted <laughs> and we'll talk about that in a second and can be uh, due to an accident so I'm going to go ahead and take my stuff off here, give some people some time to get online with me, uh, possibly. You know, flying down the mountain, you take your, you take your helmet off and it's like, oh man. It was a good day, but taking that helmet off feels good. Now I uh, I learned how to snowboard back in the day when when before helmets were cool, right? You had your beanie and you had your you had your goggles on over the top of your beanie, and man, you were just I had my hair sticking out underneath my beanie. I was I was killing it, right? And the first my first day snowboarding it was uh, up in Idaho during a uh, ski night and I had rented a snowboard and boy I was bound and determined to get down that icy slope without crashing and uh, needless to say I crashed a lot I uh, couldn't move couldn't pick my head up off the pedal the next day I can't tell you if I had concussions or not never got knocked out but who knows because I was I was racking my, my head pretty darn hard. Um, but just because you didn't get knocked out doesn't mean you weren't necessarily concussed or did some da some damage in some way, shape, or form. And that, that's not even the first time that I recognized myself causing trauma to my head and my neck, uh, my body, for that matter. Um, yeah. Uh, hits in... It's in football. I didn't start football till I was a junior in high school. And I was not a strong, a strong kid. I was not a big kid. And I did not know how to hit at all. I did not know how to take a hit. And uh, remember my first, my first practice uh, during Hell Week, went up for a ball, caught that sucker, and Kevin Atchison took my legs out. Man, I hit that ground. I saw... I saw stars, I saw birds, uh, coach said, ah, you popped your cherry, <laughs> and yeah, that, that wasn't a good time, I actually still feel that right here, so I'm going to be working on that when we're done today, or maybe, maybe during the session today. Uh, yeah, let's see, uh, wrestling, screwing around with friends, getting my neck wrenched, um, I had a, I had a favorite snowboard video. It was called Whiskey. You've ever seen Whiskey? Uh, it's a good time. It was snowboarding back in the 90s, and it was, a lot of it was about breaking beer bottles over your head. And I am yet to have broke a beer bottle over my head to this day. Doesn't mean I haven't tried. Many times. <laughs> We've all done stupid crap. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, lots of falls, snowboarding, mountain biking. Um, broke a windshield with my forehead uh, during a, a slow car crash, but still, uh, yeah, I was, I was stoked when it happened. We just got out of uh, Burger King. Yeah, I know. Back. <laughs> All you MM people out there. I uh, just got out of Burger King, headed back to the job site, and a car came out of nowhere and my buddy was driving and he hit it and wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Don't tell the police that. I told him I was wearing a seatbelt. 
and my head went right into that windshield, shat, uh, broke the whole thing. And uh, there was this guy watching, and, and I looked over and saw him. I'm like, look at that, didn't even hurt. And all of a sudden, I dropped the, the uh, drink from my hand. I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> Something bad would happen, so I uh, let the ambulance know about it. And so they said, we better take you in and get you checked out. And they, so they actually strapped me onto one of those straight uh, backboards. And when I got to the hospital, they put me in a room and they left me there. Nobody was there with me. And all of a sudden I started freaking out. And my boss walked in. I'm like, tell them to ba, 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 get me out of here. Yeah. And what are some signs of... Uh, uh, concussions or we can go even deeper uh, CTE chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a degenerative brain disease found in athletes military veterans and others with a history of repetitive brain trauma now I don't know if I have CTE I will never know until uh, I die um, because there's there's no test for it um, but they can test for your cognitive abilities, which, which can be affected uh, by uh, brain trauma and CTE. Um, let's see, some of the, I'm on the Concussion Legacy Foundation website. They actually have a, a seminar once a year. It doesn't look like they're gonna be having it this year, but I went there three years ago and it's really eye-opening. So I'm very, uh, they, they talked to, they talk to us about the, the tau proteins that the body lays down in the brain, and this is what's causing the death of the uh, brain tissue around the area. So I started wondering if, if we could connect to that tau, those tau proteins through frequency, if we made the assumption it was there, right? Or who knows, we could muscle test, right? I've used that for myself. And if we could connect to that frequency of the tau proteins, who's to say that we couldn't break those proteins down or ask the body to break them down along with addressing the emotions and the vision and, and the chakras and the meridians all in relation to that, who's to say we couldn't heal it? So some of the uh, uh, symptoms for CTE or even uh, brain trauma, our mood changes, including depression, irritability, anxiety. And I know, you know, I was a great student when I was younger. And my junior year, I stopped caring about, I stopped caring about school. I mean, I had straight A's in my freshman year. It was, it was awesome. I was stoked. And I went from a straight A student to B's and C's. Just didn't care anymore. It was a bummer. Uh, a lot of people get uh, headaches, memory problems. The and when it says mood changes, we're talking instantaneous mood changes. And this is a uh, one thing that was going through my mind when uh, I had my daughter is the mood changes. Because if anybody bumped my head or if I tried to do a cartwheel. I would instantaneously pissed off, be pissed off at the entire world. Uh, I suffered with depression for most of my life. Uh, and it's not just due to the head injuries, I don't think. There's a lot of things going along with it. Um, so I'm very grateful to get out of that. But in relation to my daughter bumping me in the head when she was a baby, I mean, it would, I would be so angry. Luckily, I would be able to control it and not do anything horrible. But it's like this, I can't even let my daughter touch my head without it screwing me up. This sucks. So gratefully, uh, through all the work that I've done, and I went to a class called Voila. I had taken cranial sacral therapy before, and all it really did was put me to sleep. Um, and I'm really susceptible to other people's energy, so that might have been a reason. I don't know. Uh, there's many possibilities. But the, uh, the voila class, along with all the work that I'd done previous to understand the ener the movement of the energy and the ability, uh, trusting in my ability to move things, um, 
that was a huge uh, help in the healing of my of my brain and my emotions and my my instantaneous mood swings. Now these here are all the bones of the skull. Now some will tell you that the bones are stagnant. They don't move. They're all fused after you're two years old, I believe it is. Um, so, well, if they don't move, then maybe it's just an energetic factor and the energy gets stuck there. I believe they move. Um, I have felt it. Uh, they do have proof of it um, because the cranial um, cerebral spinal fluid has a wave through the body and we have an expansion and contraction, contraction up through the cranial bones and down through the, um, the sacrum or tailbone. And so with the cranial work or voila or and incorpor incorporating it with tapping and the chakra work and the meridians and the uh, emotions and and everything that I've done, changing my diet. Um, muscle, um, medical medium talks about eating berries for inflammation in the brain. That was I was introduced to that last year, and that was a huge help. Um, so now I don't have to eat berries. I get to eat berries. Big difference, right? And that takes us to our relationship with food, right? I'm supposed to eat this food for this imbalance that I have, but if I don't like eating this food, isn't the negative emotional response to eating that food going to have a negative impact on what that food is actually trying to do for me, right? These things are, we've all got to think about all these possibilities while we are working with ourselves, or if you're a healer, working with others, right? Yeah. Today, it looks like I'm going to be talking to myself. So this is talking to you in future, right? And you can watch these videos after they've been filmed, and you will receive benefit from watching these videos. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I started working on my brain and cranium. Brain, cranium, neck, the vertebrae, my spine, tailbone, uh, the femur bones. I mean, yes, I was trained as a massage therapist back in the day. But I take all of that training from massage therapy and the Rolf Institute and the little things that we learned in massage therapy, including uh, the chakras and the meridians. And I've, I acknowledge and accept the fact that these are all energies. And if we can connect to energies, which we all are connected, according to what me and my daughter are learning in science, we are all stardust, right? Then we can change anything. We can even manipulate the teeth to change how they grow because if we grow under stress and we're a clencher those teeth are going to be put under that stress and they're going to change and i've seen this personally so to help myself one day i'll tell you a story about uh, mountain biking and as i mentioned before if anybody or anything touched my head, even if I knew it was happening, it would it would create a shift in me, a negative shift. And so I figured, well, if I'm mountain biking and I go to put my helmet on, that's going to create a negative shift. So I started adding to that and then I wear gloves mountain biking and I've got my mountain bike shoes and I've got my hands on my mountain bike and changing the shifting knobs and the brakes and all these things started adding up and i don't know if you feel it right now but i've got a lot of tingling going on so i'm releasing even more of um, my past trauma going deeper and deeper and deeper humans are like ogres and ogres are like onions there's lots and lots of layers from shrek so what i did that day i loaded up my bike and i drove out to the pine nuts I uh, took my back out of the truck and I went to work. 
So I put on, put on my first glove. Now, very important part of this is consciousness, awareness of yourself and how you respond. So I put on my first glove and I felt tension and restriction, not just the glove over the hand, but in me. And so I did a bunch of tapping about words that came up and a word that's coming up right now is actually fear. So there is still some fear of crashing. So <clears throat> if you have fear, you will not as well have the ability to support yourself, right? Oh, let me get that off there so I can see everything. Keynote. Um, changed and now I can play this in a, in a window. It's really nice. So I'm going to get Keynote on here. And so if you remember, this is definition of corn according to what I teach and how I how I see things. Nope, I can't control that because my Wi-Fi is off. That's okay. So, and this core is controlled by our unconscious self and our unconscious self gets a lot of trauma when we've had concussions or neck injuries. Um, if your atlas, first vertebrae in your neck is misaligned to side to side or forward and back, which mine was to the side and forward, I think, when I first got it adjusted by Dr. Party back in 1990, I think it was. And when he hit me with his, with his ancient machine, <laughs> I could suddenly see. And it's like, holy cow. And a lot of things changed for me. Unfortunately, there was a lot of emotions stuck to there and a lot of compensations, which we'll touch in on another time, that would keep pulling it out, right? So, uh, tapping on fear in relation to one glove coming up. So once my tapping was finished for that day, we've got lots of layers, so only so many layers can be addressed, I put on the other glove, tap through what came up. Nothing's coming up now. Uh, put on my one of my shoes. Say, put on my right shoe. Oh, look at that! Hurt comes up. Feeling hurt, and that doesn't necessarily mean physical. That can be emotional, right? Uh, people not understanding why you are the way you are. That can hurt somebody's feelings, and it's not their responsibility to understand. Okay, we have to educate when we're in a bad way, except when we're in a bad way. But that doesn't give us also the the green light to go ahead and be a jerk, <laughs> right? But it's hard to differentiate when you're screwed up. So that, ah, thank you very much for being here whenever you are. Uh, that hurt will again turn off our core. Uh, let's see, uh, put on the other shoe, nothing, um, put on my helmet, uh, frustration comes up, confusion, tightening the helmet, hostility, confusion, anger, hurt, wow, a lot of words, now remember, I did this exercise probably six years ago, five or six years ago, and I'm not, I'm not, I am haven't even gotten into the cranial stuff yet. I'm just tapping on the emotions, and these things are still coming up, and I can still visualize that day, so that day has not been cleared. And if you're a mountain biker and you've had head injuries, how hard is it for you to see, um, see in front of you when you're going over chatter bumps? Right? Everything starts blurring out, right? Which makes things difficult. Uh, and if we're ungrounded, all of a sudden we can't really feel the pedals underneath our feet. So I would always use clip-ons. And if you're a mountain biker, it's not the smartest thing to be doing. <laughs> but I needed those clip-ons because my feet would just be sliding all over the place. And so if I can't feel my pedals now, I don't use clip-ons anymore. 
I got some, uh, uh, I forget what they are, but they've got screws <laughs> in them. So if I ever catch my shin, I'm screwed, literally. Ha! Huh? Um, so yeah, if I can't feel my pedals, I stop my bike immediately and I work on myself. Now this isn't necessarily true for everybody, but this is what I have to do in order to be safe on my bike so I can do, so I can go fast and have fun. Good. Uh, put on my sunglasses. And then I would put my hands on my, on my handlebars. And hurt could be up again. Hmm, hurt. Very good. And then I would grab the great brakes and shift the gears. Ah, shifting gears. Uh, helpless. Okay. All right. Now I'm balanced, right? And then we go to our cranium and we start balancing all of those bones in relation to everything that just came up. So we go through the frontal bone, the occiput, the parietal, parietal, temporal, temporal, sphenoid, 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 nasal bone, nasal bone, zygoma, zygoma. That one needed balancing. <sighs> Any nasal bones? Nope. Uh, vomer? Nope. Mandible? Um, I do need some balancing in the vertebrae. Fifth vertebrae, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then sacrum and coccyx. Sacrum, coccyx. Ooh, uh, pelvis. Beautiful. All right. So now my cranium, I call it, I've, I've locked my cranium into this new pattern of the things that I've released, the emotions that I've released. And that took, well, it took maybe 10 minutes here. I was there doing that for an hour. I did not go for a ride when I was done because my was just energetically depleted. It took a lot of work. And as you saw, I, I was yawning through some of this. So yawning is a, is a release. <laughs> I'm going to check and see here. I've got a little notice. I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody's. There we go. All right. So, yeah, still talking to myself. Now, you can imagine, snowboarding is different. Snowboarding, skiing, we're in the cold. And this was a huge aha for me last year. Um, I was skiing one day with, with uh, Nathan Nat, and we were having an amazing day. Uh, let me see. I think I can find that video here. I might have it. Uh, this one here, this is a great picture. That's from a day at Heavenly. Me and my buddy Kyle were doing some little hiking. That was a that was a good day. Uh, but let's see, let's see if I can find that video. I'm not sure if I saved it on here. I did not, but it's on my phone. This was a day at Kirkwood, and I had hiked along out to the Palisades. I think that was December, oh, January 14th. No, no, that was 2020. No, I think this was a day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, and it was just insanity up there. So much snow. Good day. But anyway, uh, back to uh, the snow and the cold. Um, last year, I caught an edge skiing, which I'm not supposed to be doing, <laughs> and I racked my I racked my head bad. I got twisted in the air, landed uh, looking up to the sky, and so I laid there for five minutes because I was swirling. It was not good. I was a little I was a little afraid to see what actually comes up. Uh, again, the emotion of being hurt 
insignificant, sorrow. Good. Those all came up just today in relation to me hitting my head last year. And it was an icy day too. Uh, luckily we had found a lot of uh, uh, powder powder drips. So we were getting throwing some good some good sprinkles in the air. Uh, so I sat there for or laid there. I didn't even get up. And uh, I did a bunch of balancing on myself um, so I could get up. Um, but I made the decision I I gotta go home. That was that was a bad bad one. I gotta go home and and heal myself. So I caught up with him. Luckily, he was waiting for me there at the lift. And I said my goodbye. Got to go home. Thank you very much. And I split. And I got home and I was freezing to death. I jumped in my hot tub to warm up and I could not warm up in the hot tub. And then I started thinking, well, is that cold relation, me being cold related to being in the cold? And all those other traumas that I'd never taken care of in the cold happening right now. And I got a huge muscle test and yes, it is. So I released my attachment to being cold in relation to trauma. Shivering immediately went away and I was better. And this happens a lot. I don't think it's happening quite as much anymore because they're learning. But uh, if you've had a surgery... Um, you experience change in uh, barometric pressure and cold in your surgery area or a, a, a knee replacement or something like that. And back in the day, they would keep the surgery room cold to help the surgeon because he's in a stressful place and then they need to keep him cool. But your unconscious self is still experiencing that cold. Is that possible? Is that a possibility of something that you need to release? So that you don't have such a negative effect or effect or res effect on or response in cold or the change in the season. You don't have to be so negative when winter is coming, right? Because some of us like winter. So uh, I see someone might be watching. So if you have any questions, uh, comments, anything you'd like help with today, feel free to put it out there. Otherwise, I will continue uh, my my rant. So yeah, these cranial bones, they will hold energy. Uh, actually, they will hold emotion. Uh, but we're going to connect it to something else right now. So uh, let's see. This ethmoid. Okay. Uh, it is not that big. <laughs> oh, the occiput's back behind it. That's why. And that's not labeled correctly. So most of the purple here is occiput. That's the back of the head. Ethmoid is right back there behind the nose. And so that's what's coming up for me. And so we're going to work a meridian in relation to the, to the ethmoid. So we're going to go over here because everything is related. But we've got to clear everything in, in relation to one thing. And what's coming up for me is the stomach meridian. And we're going to work the consciousness of the, stum consciousness of the stomach. So if my ethnoid is stuck in a position or I've, my third eye is too open or too closed, right? Sixth, sixth chakra. Then that ethnoid is going to be unhappy, for lack of better words. Uh, feeding comes up. So feeding and nourishment. Back in the day, I would eat a lot when my neck is out. And as long as I was eating, my head didn't hurt. But within a half an hour, my head would start hurting again. That's uh, I've never made that connection before. Uh, intolerance. Receiving. Stability and strength, all related to the stomach consciousness. And this is from uh, Jane Bartholomew. Uh, this is on my, on my website. Okay. So what are you going to do about that? 
Christine? What I would recommend doing is doing the four point technique. And again, that's on my website on the tapping, the tapping protocol. Actually, it's uh, right here now I'm on the page. So we go to the support page and we look up the tapping protocol. And this is a little story about what tapping's done for me. Tapping protocol on the four point technique is here. You rub one of the four points uh, gently in between the finger and thumb, in between the eyes, push the top of your ear to the top of the head, and you rub up and down on the outsides of the knees. Okay, those are very powerful points. You do one at a time. And you close your eyes and you visualize that incident. And you visualize your cranium. So look up a, um, or you have a picture of your cranium ready to look at. Okay, you visualize that incident. Everything that happened before, what was happening during, the excitement you were feeling, it feels like you were running through that door, yeah? Uh, let's see here. You are running through that door. You are very excited, uh, but not necessarily for a good reason. So visualize everything that's going on. There might have been music in the background. Uh, visualize what happened after that. Uh, who took care of you, everybody that's going around, if it was just yourself, and you visualize everything until you can't see anything anymore. And then you're done with that point. After that, you move to the next point. Again, visualize it. You might see more, um, more, uh, more things happening, more details. You might see more details. You might see less details. Acknowledge how you're feeling going through it tap up or acknowledge those emotions okay visualize it until you can't see it anymore move to the next point visualize it again you might not be able to see it you might see more you might see less as many details possible work through it until you can't see it anymore move to the next one and it might not be that it disappears it might be that it changes to something good it might change to, to another head injury Okay, so that's what you're going to do, okay? And it's very important that you do this for yourself, okay? Right now, I'm not allowed to specifically help you. This is something you have to do, and you will do it because you want to feel as good as you were feeling a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago, right? You've been feeling better. If you don't stay on top of this, you will suffer as much as I've suffered my life because I didn't have the tools. I'm giving you the tools now. It's your choice to use them, right? So use them and have fun with them, okay? Every single day. Make the time every single day. Does that sound good to you? Uh, let's see. Oops, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. It opened up a new page. And uh, after the four-point technique, uh, positive affirmations, when I first learned these, I would say these to myself while tapping. Holy cow, the sweat dropping from my, from my armpits and my butt. It was crazy. And you've got your emotion wheel. Looking at the emotion wheel. What emotions do you feel in your gut? I get hurt. There's a lot of hurt nowadays coming up. and helpless, insignificant. So you're gonna to wanna to tap on those emotions and then go up and do your positive affirmations. And again, have fun with it. You're very welcome. Okay, so remember, when you're clearing stuff, put your stuff in the situation, put yourself into the situation. Wear your clothing that you're wearing in the situation. Turn on the music that you were listening to. Uh, white zombie. <laughs> um, if the sun was out, go outside. Experience it. If it was dark, okay? All these things, uh, the sights, the smells, the sounds, they all have an impact on the unconscious self, which in turn... 
controls your core, takes away or gives you your internal support. All right. So thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful day and happy healing. Bye-bye.